Hi, it's Dr. Janet Pope here reporting at Room Now, and you can follow me on Twitter at Janet Burdope. I'd like to talk about RA conundrums, most of which were presented today at the ACR 2021 Convergence meeting. So I think you could also subphrase this as choose your own adventure because I'm going to talk about biomarkers, using drugs clinically in a better way, and some safety as well. So um, one of the topics was uh, precision medicine, and this was abstract 1252 by Jeff Curtis and his group looking at Coravitas or Corona data. And the question here was, can a biomarker, which is called a molecular signature response classifier, and they called that MSRC, it's a 23 biomarker, can it detect non-response of patients with RA starting a TNF inhibitor. And by non-response, it was not achieving an ACR50. So it's quite a big high bar outcome. And they looked over the next year. And they found that in general, if you didn't have this level as being high, so you don't have this molecular signature response classifier that's high, then you would get um, about 29% don't get an ACR50, or you would say, okay, 71% do, which is actually pretty good in clinical care. If you had a medium high uh, value, it's not quite 50-50, but it's getting to that where 42% um, don't respond. So in other words, 58% respond. So it's attenuated. And then if you were in the very highest group with this molecular signature response classifier being quite high, you would only get an ACR 50 of 40%. So I don't think it's ready for prime time yet because I don't know when to use it. I don't know if it changes when we repeat it. And I certainly don't know the cost. The other thing is it's not 100% specific or sensitive, but wouldn't it be great when we have so many choices that we would get the right drug into the right patient at the right time? So I think it's something to follow and uh, keep watching over time. Then looking on how should we use our drugs. So there was an anecdotal study because it's not randomized, it's following patients over time from the large multi-country databases of the combined data called the jackpot trial, Jack for Jack inhibitors, not Jack as in Jack Cush. Anyway, in the jackpot trial, they had a really good clinically relevant question. It was uh, abstract 1442. The question was, after a Jack inhibitor, are you doing worse, same or better if you go Jack to Jack? or if you go to Jack to other mechanism of action. So Jack to a biological, which could be a TNF or other bio DMARDs. And the idea was to look and what they found was that the Jack inhibitor patients were worse off. They had late, later line of therapy when they had their Jack to begin with. Then when these patients switched, it wasn't randomized. It looked interestingly that going Jack to Jack or Jack to other mechanism of action had the same benefit and the same durability of response. And one little clinical pearl they found was that if you had a side effect on the first jack that caused you to stop the drug, it was more apt to happen on the second jack as well. We do need an RCT. I think we could have a wonderful pragmatic trial, but those results surprised me. And if you adjust for some of the bad characteristics of the patients who were initially on JAX, you might even find that uh, Jack to Jack does still just as well, but this was an unadjusted analysis. There were also a couple other studies to shout out. So um, uh, abstract 1438 looked at steroid increase in VA patients with rheumatoid arthritis, over 23,000 RA patients. And if you had glucocorticoids prescribed within the last 30 days, you had a 15% increase in MACE. And obviously there was a dose response found, and this is one of many studies showing that. So. Um, is it chicken or egg? Is it the worst patients get glucocorticoids or those flaring who will have higher hypercoagulability? And we know DOS is related to um, arterial thromboembolic disease as well as to VTE. So chicken, egg, or both. But I think the bottom line is avoid glucocorticoids when you can. And that would be following the more recent ACR uh, guidelines for rheumatoid arthritis. Then two other quick uh, things to talk about, a drug we use all the time, methotrexate, um, 
uh, abstract 1444 looked at the side effects from the patient's perspective, and one in three had nausea or significant GI side effects. There were oral ulcers and alopecia. Alopecia especially complained of in women patients, not men. And um, we don't know what to do with that, but I think if you prime a patient uh, for side effects, they might get them. On the other hand, you have to tell them about side effects to some degree and help work through it. Then the only other uh, abstract that I think would be really interesting for us is looking at ultra low dose rituximab. So in abstract 1443, it was an RCT. Um, once you've had your normal dosing of rituximab in rheumatoid arthritis, so your gram, one gram IV times two, or anywhere after having that, patients were randomized to a gram, 500 milligrams or 200 milligrams. And interestingly, 200 milligrams IV Q6 monthly, it was used a little bit more uh, frequently than maybe Q6.4 uh, monthly with the higher doses and did just about as well. I think two take homes from this, cost savings, and maybe we have less B cell depletion, which will maybe give better outcomes if our patients get COVID. So I think there's a lot of clinical pearls in RA treatment today. Uh, follow us at Room Now, and thank you and enjoy the meeting.